So we begin, we begin our um, our solemn celebrations of Holy Week with Palm Sunday. What we, what you and I do today, with the Church Universal, is we commemorate Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And so, so we, with the people of Israel and the people of Jerusalem, who saw Christ entering uh, with our hosannas, three days later, uh, they're yelling, "Crucify him! Crucify him!" So, so what we do today at the beginning of this liturgy is we proclaim the gospel of the entrance uh, of Jesus into Jerusalem and then uh, uh, at the uh, appropriate time in the liturgy we'll proclaim the passion of Christ and so uh, it is from the gospel of Mark this year so it's not as long as it usually is right and so so we'll uh, proclaim I'm just waiting for our uh, sacramentary so we can begin with the blessing so um, we have been preparing by works of charity and self-sacrifice to celebrate our Lord's Paschal mystery Today we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the whole church throughout the world. Jesus entered in triumph into his own city, Jerusalem, to complete his work, to suffer, die, and to rise again. With lively faith and devotion, let us recall his entry, which led to our salvation, and follow in his footsteps, united with him in his suffering on the cross, may we share his resurrection to, do, to new life. Almighty and eternal God, bless these branches and make them holy. If you would come in and take a branch. Huh? An eternal Jerusalem, where he lives forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem, at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden, Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? The disciples told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the call to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Brothers and sisters, the goodness of salvation, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Let us go forth in peace in procession in the name of Christ. Hosanna in the highest. Now, if you've heard me go through it once or twice, you'll catch right on. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest.
sent our Savior into the world. You gave us all an example to follow. In humble obedience, he took upon himself a body like ours and gave himself up to death on the cross. In your mercy, grant us the grace to learn from the example of his passion and to share in the glory of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The servant of the Lord said, The Lord God has given me the tongue of the teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thank you, God. <coughs> my God, my God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to, to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. <laughs> Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. It was two days before Passover and the feast of the unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. She broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, 
where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show, show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went into the city, found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him, one after another, Surely not I. It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, This is my body. And he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them. And all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. Then they went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. Once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough, the hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, the one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So, when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were abandoned? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. 
They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. He was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not have an answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, and, I tell, and, I, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at, stared at him and said, You are... You also were with Jesus, the man of Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And then he went into the forecourt. The cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them. You are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. And Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply so that Pilate was amazed. Now, at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. <clears throat> now, a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. And the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. They called together the whole cohort. They clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crowd, they put it on him. They began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with the reed, spat on him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put on his own clothes on him. Then 
they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was about nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right, one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You would destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. And in the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He did not save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came and covered the whole land until three in the afternoon. <gasps> At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloa, Eloa, lama sabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he's calling for Elijah. Someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry, and breathe his last. of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he had breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James, the younger, and of Josie's, and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought a linen cloth, taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of Josie, saw where the body had been laid. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise the Lord. Lord. Sunday, Passion Sunday, 
And it seems for you and I that the length of the retelling of the beginning of Jesus' passion, death, and resurrection is always given to us as our entrance into this most solemn uh, week in the year, this Holy Week. And so as I was thinking about this reading, it really is, I remember, I think the children are so wonderful, I remember as a child when my mother would take us and, uh, and I would uh, realize that it was Passion Sunday and I'd become a little anxious like that, she would pinch me. And then I would stay quiet and she'd say, offer it up, right? So, so, uh, so that in some ways we offer our, uh, our reunite our sufferings with Christ uh, on the cross. In many ways, um, the, the, the homily almost seems redundant. It seems like that there would be an attempt to adorn this story with words that might really detract from the meaning of it. So I simply want to say to you that in some ways, when we come and we hear this, uh, we hear this passion of Christ. By the way, passion in English has a little bit of a different meaning in the sense of, of the passion of Christ. It comes from the Latin in the Middle Ages, passio. It means to be passive. Most of the stories that we hear in the scripture up until this point uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane is Jesus active in his ministry, healing the sick, giving sight to the blind, right? Hearing to the deaf, making the lame walk, from this moment on, we hear things that are done to Jesus, right? We hear how he is mocked and how he is scourged and how a crown of thorns is put on his head and how he is nailed to a cross. And for many of us, it's in this passivity that we understand the depths of God's love for us, which won for us our salvation. And so for you and I, as we sit here sometimes and we listen to this, maybe we have to explore that dimension of our lives in those moments when all of our actions and all of our activity doesn't do anything for us, in those moments when our options seem limited and we seem so restricted, in those moments when everything that we are doing feels powerless in our life and we feel completely ineffective, it is then that we remember that this passive part of Jesus' life is what for us is the central message of our salvation. And so in those moments when that becomes Jesus difficult and, and, and awful for us, we can unite all of that with Christ on the cross. It's a very interesting dynamic here. God is so dependent on his love for us that in the incarnation, his love compelled him to become one with us. And from that moment on, we see how Jesus moved in the reality of both his human and divine nature. Listen to what Jesus does here, right? He says, I have need of certain things. This is a God who has no need of anything, right? But he sends his disciples out to find a room. He sends them to find a cult that he can ride on. Jesus is even buried in a tomb that isn't his. And from the moment of the incarnation that you and I celebrated at Christmas to the moment of, this, uh, uh, it was of his death on the cross, Jesus borrows from us and uses you and I. He becomes for us what St. Teresa of Avila reminds us. We then become Christ's hands and feet in the world. We become his mouth and his eyes and his ears in the world. This idea that Jesus so moves and lives and breathes in us in this incarnational sense is a, another dimension of the mystery that we celebrate, the central mystery of our faith, that simply out of love for us, uh, God's Son came to be one with us, uh, took on our nature as human beings, used all of who we are, and in, and in that experience of using all of who we are, made holy all of who we are, right? And so that as you and I move during this Holy Week, we might look uh, at some dimensions of our life. We might look at some of those moments in which, uh, in which all these things that we do, nothing really works, right? And turn to God and recognize that our salvation uh, was, uh, was uh, one for us once and for all in the person of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> Let us stand and profess our faith as we say, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one of being with the Father. Through God all things were made, for us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, 
He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, who will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, who is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As a people of faith, we offer our prayers and petitions in confidence to God through Christ our Savior. Our Lenten response will be, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the leaders of our nation and the world, Give them the wisdom so that they may turn from violence and antagonism, find peaceful solutions to conflicts, and promote peace, justice, and the common goods. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the American National Catholic Church, Mr. George, our clergy and congregations, open our ears so that, like Isaiah's suffering servant, we may all find strength in the knowledge that the Lord helps us and that we can neither be disgraced nor put to shame as we continue to spread the good news of salvation and welcome all into our midst. We pray for Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For us and for all people, instill us with the humility and obedience displayed by Jesus Christ so that we too may one day share in the glory of the Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in need of shelter, clothing, and food, ease their suffering and give them hope for the future. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and the suffering, especially Kathy Clare, provide them healing and comfort from their ailments. And are there any for whom we should especially remember? Isabella. John Hewitt. Or Gary. Robbie and Mert. Pop. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have gone to their rest, grant them peace and salvation gained through the death and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. And are there any who wish you especially remember? I mean, Rosanna. Just Robert Peter. Baby Graff. Janet Argentina. He's killed on the airplane in the French Switzerland. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In a special way today, we pray for the peace in the world, uh, for peace in the world, especially uh, for the peace in Jerusalem. We pray in a special way for all of those uh, who might be suffering and anxious today, that God might bring them some peace. But we pray for all of those who are oppressed uh, uh, unjustly. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Most high and glorious God, we bring you our prayers and petitions, those which we've spoken aloud and those in the depths of our heart. We ask you to hear and answer them if they be for our good, for we make them in the name of Christ your Son. Amen. Amen. Please turn to number 356 for all glory, laud, and honor. Number 356. Yeah. 
and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, through the passion of your only begotten Son, draw near to us with your forgiveness that we who merit nothing of ourselves may, through the unique sacrifice of Christ, experience the healing power of your mercy. Grant this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also lift up your hearts. Lift Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Though he was sinless, he suffered willingly for sinners. Though innocent, he accepted condemnation to save the guilty. By his dying, he washed away our sins. By rising again from the dead, he brought justification for us all. So, with all the angels and saints, we sing the joyful hymn of your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord.
God, you have always done for us what is holy. You have always done for the human family for our good, so that we may be holy as you yourself are holy. Look with kindness then on your people gathered here before you. Send forth your spirit and power that these gifts may become for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, in whom we have become your sons and daughters, your children. When we were lost and our hearts were far from you, you showed the depth of your love. Your Son, who alone is the just one, gave himself into our hands and was nailed to the wood of the cross. Before he stretched out his arms between heaven and earth in the everlasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover in the company with those he loved. While they were at table, he took bread. He gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to all of those whom he loved, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. At the end of the meal, knowing that he would reconcile all things to himself by the blood of the cross, he took the cup filled with wine. Again he gave you thanks and praise, and handing the cup to all of those whom he loved, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come. Will come again. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come. our Passover and our lasting peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection. We await the blessed day of his return. And so we present to you, God, ever faithful and true, the offering that restores us to your friendship. Merciful Father, look with love on those you draw to yourself through the sharing and the sacrifice of Christ. By the power of your spirit, may they become the body of your risen Son, in whom all divisions are healed. Keep us in communion of mind and heart together with the patriarchs of Alexandria, Antioch, Constantinople, Jerusalem, and, and Rome. George, our bishop, help us to work for the coming of your kingdom until at last we stand in your presence and take our place among the saints with the Virgin Mary and the apostles and with our departed brothers and sisters whom we commend to your mercy. Then in glory of your new creation, freed from the sting of death, we shall sing to you the hymn of thanksgiving, which rises from Christ the living Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For in thy kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us all greet each other a sign of Christ's peace. Please turn to number 424 at the name of Jesus, number 424. Glory now. He 
emptied himself as a slave yet free came in human likeness for you and for me in human likeness for you and for me at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow every tongue confess him King of glory now Jesus is Lord King of glory now He humbled Himself and obeyed God's will on a cross He died on Calvary's hill for you and me, he obeyed God's will. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess him, King of glory now. Jesus is Lord. Glory now. God exalted him, raised him up on high, so above all others his name will not die. That name we honor and glorify. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess him, King of glory now. Jesus is Lord, King of glory now. Christ Jesus will come at the end of time. To call us home until that day you and I will proclaim at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, every tongue confess him, King of glory now. Jesus is Lord, King of glory
Lord, you have fed us with this holy food, and through the death of your Son have inspired us to hope for what our faith promises. Lead us by his resurrection to the heaven we so earnestly desire. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please, please be seated just for a moment. I won't keep you. I just wanted you to, uh, many of you may know from our parish bulletin, if you read it, that our parish council president, Kathy, has had a uh, fairly serious accident in Florida while she was on vacation. So she's recuperating nicely. She went yesterday to rehab after uh, some extensive surgery uh, um, on her um, on her, uh, her back and, uh, and and spine. She's she's okay, uh, uh, but she's going to need some rehabilitation. So she's just went now for a week uh, to in Florida. Her sister is with her in Florida. Her sister, thanks be to God, lives there, and uh, and so Kathy is very near her sister. So keep her in your prayers, if you would, right? Please keep her in your prayers. All of the sick of the parish, but but Kathy in particular, she. Uh, she, uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, she has done much to kind of bring this parish together in important ways, often behind the scenes where you don't see her, right? And so so uh, I, I missed her because we had to scramble around and get Jerry and Cilio and T and everybody to, to help with the palms and things that you don't think of that, uh, that, that is really done for us. So, so please keep her in your prayers and, uh, and hopefully she'll be home. There's a, there's a lot that happens behind the scenes uh, to make all of this uh, liturgy happen in such a special way. Thank you for joining us. We have really begun in earnest our Holy Week, our, our journey towards Calvary with Christ. But we need to remember that our journey doesn't end there, right? It begins on Easter morning. And so, so join us if you can. Wednesday will be the final stations of the cross with uh, 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 exposition of the Blessed Sacrament and benediction. And then on Holy Thursday at 7, we'll have the Mass of the Lord's Supper and the Mandatum. Mandatum in Latin means commandment, means do this. And so, uh, so I will ask representatives from the parish to come up and, uh, and the clergy of the parish will wash your feet the way that Christ washed the feet of his disciples. It is for us a model of servant leadership. And so, so please join us for that. And then we'll have the, uh, the uh, removal of the Blessed Sacrament from the tabernacle and placed in the altar of repose. And there'll be a, a procession for that. I know that, that uh, these, these days, uh, these solemn uh, um, ceremonies use incense because Christ is incarnate. All of our senses are involved in our redemption. And so, uh, so, uh, so I didn't. I try not to use as much incense because I don't want to blow you out of here, right? So, so, uh, uh, so, but on Holy Thursday we'll have a, a short procession with the Blessed Sacrament and the altar of repose. On Good Friday, uh, Father Gigi, for the first time as a priest, will lead the Good Friday services here at St. Francis. So please join him and support him. Later that evening, Father Gigi and I will uh, conduct the. Um, the solemn liturgy of Good Friday and the procession with the body of Christ through the streets of uh, Long Branch at 7 in the evening. So if you can join us for that, that would be great. Uh, if not, pray for us uh, while we're there. Holy Saturday is a quiet time when we wander around the tomb uh, with Christ. And then on Holy Saturday evening, beginning at 7 o'clock, at the door of the church, we will light the new fire. Uh, we will celebrate uh, the mother of all vigils, uh, the, the most solemn vigil in all of the church, in which we recognize that because Christ came to live as one of us, his death and resurrection makes all things new. So we bless the new fire, we bless the new water, we bless the new oils, we bless the new candles. All is made new in our life of Christ. So join us for that at, uh, at 7 in the evening. And then on Easter Sunday at 12 o'clock for the Mass of Resurrection of the Lord. So uh, if you can join us for that, that would be great. Um, I see uh, that, that uh, people have listened to the call to serve at God's altar. And so, so we have uh, our acolytes seem like they're in good shape, right? So I want to thank them. I want all of you to participate. Um, we, we, I know we need some uh, people to sing, help uh, uh, sing. And so, but I'm really very pleased with, uh, with our accolades up here. So, so, so thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. For your time. And so if you could join us for Holy Week. The liturgies are a little bit more, uh, require a little bit more choreography. But you know, here at St. Francis, if we don't know what to do, we just bow before and after. And it looks like that's what we're doing. <laughs> so, uh, so that's how we figure that out, right? So yes, um, there is in the back of the church uh, a sheet for you to fill out for flowers. Generally, uh, Kathy does this for us. And in this case, uh, Jane and, and, and Jerry and Silio are doing this for us. 
If you would like to donate flowers uh, to the church in, in memory of anyone that you love uh, or a living or deceased, please fill that out and put it in the envelope and then return that to us. And then what we'll do on Easter Sunday at the Mass is we pray for all of those. And I, I generally have a list. And so we name them in the canon of the Mass. So please contribute to the, uh, to the, uh, to the, the Easter flowers. It's customary where I grew up that on Holy Saturday we visit our family's graves. And so, so we take flowers to have that happen. And so you may want to do that. And if not, uh, please memorialize those you love uh, with flowers here at St. Francis of Assisi. So, uh, so that we would like that. Um, I know that on April 12th, I think there's mass and a movie. So join us. Uh, April 11th, mass and a movie. I think we're going to have some hot dogs and popcorn. And uh, I don't know what the movie is. But anyway, come and join us, right? So uh, mass and a movie. Uh, and uh, please join us for our, our, our festivities. Is there anything I'm forgetting, Jane? I got it. So read your, read your newsletters, right? So how many of you get the newsletters? Yeah, you should all raise your hands. <laughs> um, who's new to this week? Want to tell us who you are? Fernando. Hi, Fernando. Where are you from? Just trying out different churches. Where are you from? New York. Oh, New York. Welcome. Welcome to St. Francis. And I think there's, where's Paul and, uh, where's Paul and Elisa? Maybe they left. Anyway, they were new too. They probably, uh, uh, this is a, this is a, a lengthy mess. So, um, so, uh, so we'll see it. We'll see it. We'll see it for Holy Week, right? All right, good. All right. As we go forth together, let us sing number 423, The King of Glory. This is a bold song. It makes a bold statement. He is Emmanuel, the promised of ages. So let us not be afraid to sing it boldly. Number 423. The King of Glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before it, lift up your voices. Who is the King of Glory? How shall we call Him? He is Emmanuel, the promise of ages. The King of Glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before Him, lift up your voices. In all of Galilee, in city or village, He goes among His people, curing their illness. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before Him, lift up your voices. Sing then the David, Son, our Savior and Brother, in all of Galilee was never a mother. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before Him, lift up your voices. He gave His life for us, the pledge of salvation. He took upon himself the sins of the nation. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Who is the King of glory? How shall we call him? He is Emmanuel, the promise of ages. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up. 